What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. So today, Tuesday, talk about Tesla. Tesla, Tuesday. Today we're not going to talk about trading in Tesla. Um, so while I, I do trade Tesla quite a bit, trading is where I get my income. I do have my in investment account. Uh, Tesla is not yet, but I can tell you right now, will be my biggest position. Um, but I do want to talk about uh, the, the bear case. Why? Let, let, let's just go over it. Because right now, if you talk to anybody about Tesla, right? They're either they're bearish, it's way overvalued, or it's super undervalued. And uh, I guess I have the beholder on that one. Because there's some legit arguments. There's some fanboys. Now, there's a couple of YouTubers that, that just paint this perfectly. They're, they're, they're strong man, fine, strong man, fine, I think it's his name. Kind of obnoxious, um, but he brings up some valid points. And then the other side of that coin, um, uh, what's his name? Stephen Mark Ryan. Three first names. He likes to laugh at his own jokes. If he ever does watch this, sometimes he does this like, you know when people like, they're trying to say like a line, but they just keep laughing all the way through it. And like, it's just me personally. Like, so let, let's get, let's keep it moving. Get that line out there. Like, just go um he's obviously he's the other side he is a, a tesla fanatic and in this video i want to talk about how i'm investing in it why it's why i don't why i don't try to pump this up as much because if you're looking at this now i mean there's the trend right more sellers than buyers I'm sorry it's going down as a trader we know the trend is down it's going down period as uh, as an investor uh this is the time to be buying i'm oh, sorry i guess it's that way that's the time to be buying not up here not at all time highs most of you guys are super comfortable buying tesla because like how many of you guys were not buying tesla here it gaps and goes here you saw these gains like, i gotta get in on that and then it just goes and maybe some of you guys even had a successful entry at one point like you were green because you bought, you waited to buy all the way up here. Now, if you want to make money in the stock market as an investor, you do have to buy low and sell high. Often easier said than done. Um, most investors actually suck. Yeah, they actually lose money almost as much as trading. It just takes you a decade to find out you suck. But essentially, you're going to put money in a company with the hopes to sell it for a gain later. Now, when you're investing, there's, uh, you know, hopefully things trend up over time you're in a company that does perform uh and in, in a few years you'll you'll sell if you're up um in day trading or yeah in, on the other side of that spectrum you'll know in a few minutes you're gonna be red or green uh that being said you still have to pick the right companies uh and there is an investment conversation to be had what i i believe personally uh is tesla um Man, and I, I've talked to some people that manage serious money. There, there's a guy you've seen on, on uh, uh, Bloomberg, Mike Kornopoulos. I was talking with him. Now, he manages $14 billion, and his fund, they're not doing Tesla. And he said, and, and uh, you got to give him got to give him credit. Uh, we have the ability as, you know, not managing that much money. Uh, we have the ability to play the in and out game or speculate a little bit more. Um but his conversation was, they can't invest on hopes and dreams. And there's a lot of things people are talking about with Tesla. A lot of the fanboys, a lot of the gurus. They're talking about a lot of things that just hasn't happened yet. How many people were buying Tesla talking about the Semi, the Cybertruck, the Roadster? Like, they're a whole mess of things. The $25,000 car, the solar, that's my big thing, is energy. Uh... It's just not tangible. It's not on paper yet. Now, anyone can make an Excel document and talk about a model, and, and you know, you can pay for that. You can, here's my model. You got to go subscribe to, I'm not hating on uh, on Steven from solving the money problem, but you got to pay for it, and then you can see his Excel document. Sweet. Okay. Uh, and then all you got to do, like, it's not, I, I want to caution this. Because while I'm in Tesla, I'm not, I'm not on either extremes. While I do like it, it will be my biggest position. I'm not a hype person at all. And we can just type in a lot. And this is not to uh, solving the money problem. But I've seen a lot of people do these models, right? Now, they're not adjusting the model for anything realistic. 
they get this what if game inside their head because they're not doing anything. All they're doing is changing the algorithm or the the little math problem at the top in, in Excel. And uh, all right, Tesla does a million cars. Okay, it's worth that much. Sweet. What if Tesla did forty million cars? And you're like, man, let's type that number in. That'd be a thirty thousand dollar stock, you know. And then all of a sudden, it's not. Well, that's not feasible. It's how long until Tesla does that? And they're thinking, man, this is my 2040 bull case scenario. It's going to be a $30,000 stock. And then they, they're down the just, just rabbit hole of just, uh, it's going to be that one day. Because one day, everyone's going to buy. If it's as great as they say and RoboTax is a thing, sales will eventually start to decline. Uh, because why would you own a car? Why would you have anything taken up in your space? Why would you need a driveway? When you can just hop on the app, I need a ride in 10 minutes, or hey, tomorrow morning, I know I'm leaving at 6 a.m., have a Tesla at my door. You, you, you can think how that would change real estate. You don't need a car when there's enough Teslas out there. You don't own anymore. All you do is rent. You got the, the, the cab, uh, which I would say is a very bullish thing for Tesla, but again, I'm going to call that the hopes and dreams category. It's not tangible. It's not out yet. Now, to the other side of the coin, uh, the part that the reason why I don't want to hype this thing up is because we we know it, it's a it's a low hanging fruit to say Elon's going to say something and then it's just not going to happen for for years. Do I need to mention it? Like, if Elon announces another damn car before one actually hits the pavement, I'm going to lose my mind. I would be. I was so happy when he said we don't need to announce another car. We need to get some things on that last earnings call because everyone wanted the twenty-five thousand dollar car. All the little groupies, you guys wanted the twenty-five thousand dollar car. Shut up! Like we don't need another idea just floating around. Why don't you make what you've already said? Like that. That's where I do get angry with Tesla because as a, as a car company, well. Some people think it's a car company. I'm not in that category. Okay, so uh, we're just getting the the. I wish I had a structure to this. I'm gonna talk about some negatives, some positives, and, and the why. This is just a my mindset as far as Tesla goes, because I'm not gonna show you evaluation. Like I don't. That's not what I'm. The reason I'm buying is in the hopes and dreams category, uh, but that's where I'm speculating. Uh, that is my bet. I'm gonna take on that is and what I don't do. What I hate hearing. Man, if there's a message to any other YouTubers, stop this. You got to do your due diligence thing. Like everyone should, please stop saying due diligence. I know it's a big word. It's got a lot of letters and you're super excited to use a big word on YouTube. Stop saying that word. <laughs> it's like they'll throw off a bunch of just fairy tale nonsense and then they'll get you all hyped up. And then they'll and like they're little disclaimers, but you do your due diligence. I just put in my last three years YouTube salary into this, which by the way, I don't make one of those. I make a couple hundred bucks a month, so I have to make money from trading. It's definitely not YouTube. And I don't want to build a YouTube channel talking crap uh, on other YouTubers. I, I do think the internet has enough hate. Um, the re only reason I even picked those two YouTubers is because it's just two sides of the spectrum. Um, yeah, if I didn't respect you at all, uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't even say your name. Um. Anyway, this there's a lot of stuff in the hopes and dreams uh, category right now, and until it hits the pavement, the space wedge, yeah, the cyber truck, the semi, how miraculous it is. At least <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. At least Nikola had something, right? Yeah. Now it was rolling down a hill. But at least Nikola had that. <laughs> Elon's got some pretty cool ideas. Elon, if you're just watching this, God, make something. <laughs> I know it's easier said than done. He's, there's a lot of feats for Tesla. We're going to get into that. Um, but yeah, I, I really will lose my top if Tesla announces another car. It better be Elon trolling. Um to the bear case, I guess, uh, some people like to value this as a car company, and uh, uh, I don't want to sound mean, but uh, have you ever taken an IQ test? Now, while I'm going to call this the hopes and dreams category, it doesn't take a whole bunch to realize it's not just a car company. Like, they do have the Solar City, like... 
Uh, there was at one point there was talk about it being an umbrella company with the boring company in it. You know, like uh, Alphabet has Google and YouTube and all that. Like, I would prefer they don't do that because I. It, it's a cool fantasy to think um, uh, the Rockets will be <laughs> SpaceX. Some people probably just, just quit watching right there. Uh, but imagine like the the boring company that's just costing money and it's for everyone else. Like unless he's gonna put tolls down there, but that's that's not it. I prefer it just just kind of stay Tesla. Um, but to value, if I, if I hear like. Uh, Tesla's valuation is this, uh, but then Toyota's is like, you know, you guys have all seen the graph. There's Tesla's valuation, then there's all the auto manufacturers. Like, yeah, I would expect that because those guys are junk. Did you guys, like, I'm glad Toyota's finally on board now, but <laughs> their CEO, uh, you know, they thought hydrogen was the next thing. Like, oh, okay, I'm not even in that field. I don't have a degree in that. And even I could tell you. That's stupid. Like that didn't take much. That that took just a a few little common sense problems. Like okay, how would that work? It, it took five seconds of thought and thought, no, no, that's not a good idea. That's not happening at all. Obviously, electric's gonna be the the next way. Um, uh, and then you got what Chevy? Oh, sweet. The only reason Chevy, the only thing Chevy is doing is lining the pockets of politicians. Not not their not their techs. Not their design crew. Uh, you know, none of that. Like, uh, and we know this because Biden says Mary was leading the way. Just shortly after that, they shut down the factory. It also announced, hey, maybe don't park your car in the garage. It'll burn your house down. So you, the only thing that reminds me of is the scene in Iron Man 2 <laughs> where they're kind of talking about all the other manufacturers. Uh, and then Chevy really just reminds me of the guy from Hammer Industries. Just a pile of junk, but, you know, the politician drawn aside. <laughs> no actual uh, specialist or professional, as Tony Stark would say. Uh, just a, a pile. Like, they're not even not even close. Uh, which, I mean, just, just brings me to the bull case. The, the why this will be my biggest position in my investment. Not my only, uh, despite what some people might say. Like, oh, it needs to be the only one. Uh, it's not, and I have been buying as it dips. I've been buying. I thought I was getting a steal at 775, and it just keeps dropping. And I gotta say, I was gonna buy some today. And then I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna wait because I bought a qu quite a bit as it drops down, and I used to get really excited. And then I was like, I'll just wait till tomorrow and just buy it even cheaper. It's on just a direct path down. This is not new to Tesla. Uh, one of my biggest mistakes, we pulled it up on the monthly a while back inside my, uh, my mentorship group. And this is just as a trader. Look at this. It was this move right here. Yeah. I think pre-split there or yeah, pre-split that was like 180 bucks and it was just to the T even like any trader looking at support and resistance should have just called that out, but it was just in the midst of this downturn. Like I wish. Don't get me wrong, I still had a bunch, still bought a bunch. I've made a lot of money on Tesla, but that was just one of those moves. Looking back, you're like, what was I thinking? And we're approaching something similar. Well, the, there's the gravity of the stock market that is bringing everything down. We've talked about the crash. These are just normal cycles in the stock market, and, and things feel just the gravity of it. But there does come the time. So in, in the midst of a crash, liquidity dries up. It's why I, when I do trade stuff, if you guys don't know me as, as a trader, that's my that's my income. Uh, it's not YouTube. I'm not famous. Uh, just trading, but I trade stuff with volume. So it's like spy, QQQ, IWM. I trade the futures on those. Um, I do options, but in Amazon and Tesla is my bread and butter. Those are literally the top two options traded tickers. I only do stuff that has volume. But in the midst of a crash, you guys watch that all go away. Volume dries up. I mean, I wish I had just a, a better analogy. Uh, imagine the ocean floor just rising a thousand feet, right? All that volume is just going to find those peaks and that's it. So it's in things like spy and, and stuff like that. Uh, but as that dissipates, as we start to put risk on, as people start, as investors start to deploy money back in, where does it go first? Now we're going to get back to the fundamentals and the basics of what is actually a deal right now. There's a trader. In, in, so just to, if you are new to my channel, uh, imagine 
the this is the best way I can give you this, this visual right so here is here is fundamental analysis or right? your, your, your fundamentals this is your valuation this is all the work you did in Excel you typed in all the numbers here's your bull case here's your bear case here's what you think probably average right in the middle you know that's that's like I'm gonna invest because I think my, I'm gonna park my money here. I want it to grow here. That's the trajectory I want it to stay on. Uh, and then trading just kind of in between all, all this. Um, let's just move on. As far as well, I guess we're already on it. When we're talking about valuations now, like or, or deploying cash back in the markets, where do we go first? We start to look at the big names, like Amazon, Google, Tesla's up there. There's the top 10 in the S&P, which some will call a bubble. And, and of course, the bears are going nuts right now because there's a red candle. They finally get to say they were right. After years of just being wrong, Michael Burry predicts a crash every damn day. Finally, he gets like a, a couple of red, <laughs> eight red weeks in a row. And he's finally, he's like, I got my mind to something. I told you guys, if you just listened, now let's go back to my track record of World War Three and all that. And, and you know, and, and a red candle when everybody's emotional, and by everybody I mean retail, everyone's emotional. They're just agreeing with everything. Like, that must be it. Red day. Let's check that guy. Gotta be what he's saying. And they like, you, you're, you're, your, your thinking's backwards uh, if, you're, if you're coming at this from this standpoint. Um, there are YouTube gurus that are just full of crap. They will tell you to dollar cost average into everything. Uh, there is some solid points, so if it's a company you like, now's the time to be leaning heavy. Uh, personally, how I dollar cost average is I do have money going into savings. I have money like... So I have some crypto investments. So in, in a popular one that, that I've made, just the, the quick example, is I have money going into Bitcoin, Ethereum, savings account. It's automated. It does it automatic. I don't even think about it. With these, I do a little bit, uh, just as a trading system, my trading account, I can just bounce back and forth easier. I transfer profits into it. Um, I don't deploy it all at once, though. I, I do keep it pretty consistent, but on the dips, that's what the savings account's for. So I'm buying consistent. I am dollar cost averaging. But when we get to certain levels, when I think, hey, I just need to have more in it, period, that's where the savings account dumps in that brings your average way down. So, uh, also keep your average. It, it's important for me to keep my average down as well. So if positions do go red, I do. First of all, check is this something I need to be in? You know, what I don't want to hear as an investor is the companies doing their job, like Airbnb. Oh, they they got bookings. Airbnb is is renting places. Places are booked. I wouldn't even be having this conversation if it wasn't for booked. That's like telling me Amazon sold something online. Tell me something cool. Tell me why they're gonna be crazy in five years. Not they did their job. Okay, uh, you know, so when it's cheap, like they are going to do their job. Holy cow. I need to grab every, I need to put every spare red cent I have in this thing. That's what the savings account's for. And personally, I don't want to hype this up. I think Tesla's probably still got some more pain to come. But now it, it's it's cheap enough as an investor. If I think Tesla's going to $2,000, do I really care? Despite what I literally just said. Am I really that concerned if I bought it at 630 or 570? I'm waiting for this little yellow zone. I'm grabbing some more. Uh, but if that turns around, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I missed a few bucks. Big deal. Uh, I, I got enough just fine, and I'll add it on the way up. But if we get to here, I like that spot. If it gets lower, uh, um, I, I've said to judge by this before on my trading channel is uh, I would probably own enough Tesla to hold that $400 level um, if, if we were to get that low. So let's talk about the, uh, the the hopes and dreams, the realistic. So when I invest in something, it's got to be phenomenal. It's got to be amazing. I need to see that story. I got to believe in it. In five years, this thing's crazy. Five to ten. Um, first of all, the the pros and cons of Tesla actually is Elon. If you guys think full self driving is just going to come out in this year or next year, you're probably younger than me. You probably don't understand the real world. Uh, unfortunately. Elon, being who Elon is, uh, the cool story behind that is the fact that he's not like all the other billionaires. He doesn't just conform like the rest of them. Pros and cons of that, he's trolling online. It's funny. Some shareholders probably don't like that. Like, that's, hey, they want that mature, real buttoned up, wearing the suit and tie, only talks business, always on stage. Like, you know. Yeah, and and there's times I, I you know like you know there's just been a couple of tweets like man you just didn't need to say that but again cost of doing business 
Uh, the cool thing about Elon himself is he was able to innovate and do so much cool stuff that right now, because the question always is like, what would Tesla be without Elon? It would probably take you one or two quarters to find out it's still Tesla. Elon's done so much already. That seed's already been planted. It's no longer a seedling. The way they design their new factory, like an actual microchip from one process to the next. It's not like we're going to body here, paint here, bring it back around, all disorganized. They built it from a pers uh, perspective of um, productivity. Hey, that thing needs to be hands-on the whole... It needs to go from one part to the next, leaving hands-on the whole time. You know, and now they're going to pump out more stuff. They're just going to be a million times more efficient. they got the gigapress. Uh, if Elon's out there driving, full self-driving, and it just Dale Earnhardt's into a wall and Elon's gone, would Tesla take a hit? Yes. Would my money not... Would I not want my money in there? No. Tesla right now basically is their advertising budget. They don't have an advertising budget. They have Elon. Elon, he's like a delegator, but because of Elon, because of that rep that he has, when you get out of school and you graduate college and, and you're, a, you're a top coder, you're top in your class, where do you want to go? It's not Chevy. It's Tesla. Because you want that name, that brand recognition. I work for Tesla. I'm one of the guys. Like you want to go there. So they have all the top stuff. Elon's not out here making these cars himself. He's he, But he built the right teams to do so. He, he's built everything. So I think it would take a, a couple quarters, and there you have it. You're going to find out Tesla's still Tesla. Um, I don't know where else is I going with that. The full self-driving. Because of Elon and his tweets and lashing out. The cool, like, now if Chevy came up with full self-driving, it's probably hitting the road lickety-split. The one thing, and, and people are probably crashing. I mean, just to, uh, if you were to short uh, GM every time one got in a crash, like people try to do with Tesla, GM would have been bankrupt multiple times over. Uh, so to, also on that note, the only two auto manufacturers to not go bankrupt are Tesla and Ford. Everyone else bailed out, bankrupt, all of that. So if you were the proud owner of GM, your shares went away, and then they brought back GM, and you had to buy it back. Talk about a spit in the face. That would suck. Uh, but GM, they spend a lot of time paying, uh, not their team, politicians, uh, where Tesla, they're, they're deploying their money a little bit different. Uh, and I think that will be some, some headwinds. There, there's no way... Uh, with regulations and all that and safety, they're just going to let full self-driving out there. Which, and some of you guys are probably thinking that's crazy because full self-driving safer. And, and yeah, if you don't think full self-driving safer, your brain is like analog. It is slower than dirt. I don't care how fast you think you are. They're talking about like when a computer image is, is analyzed something, 10,000 frames per second. Okay, That is your tire being on the edge of a pothole with water in there. That is the computer recognizing we're on a pothole, changing the suspension before it even hits that pothole while you're doing 70 miles an hour. Softens the suspension, softens the blow to the car, back to uh, stiffening the suspension on the other end of the pothole. You wouldn't even know it was coming. Like you, Most people just don't even recognize how fast 10,000 frames per second is. Uh, and computers are thinking like that. And, and where I think this is going in the end, whether it's uh, we don't own any cars and we just have Teslas everywhere, or we, um, or it's full self-driving everywhere, and manually driving is illegal. That's off-road purposes only. You can go take your truck in the mud if you can still find a gas station. You know that's it, or maybe your electric truck. But it's everyone on the road. It would just be safer if computers were driving. Not, not to mention the fact of, of drunk drivers, people that just suck. Like everyone just sucks at driving. Uh, and you know this. You're probably one of the slow people in the left lane. And even you think that. Uh, but just imagine if if every car on the road was a computer, uh, everyone would merge perfectly. You could travel at speeds much faster because the tires can know uh, the the ground type, the tire temperature, everything, weather, all of that. You can go 180 miles an hour because the computer's driving, not you, not your slow texting, makeup, watching YouTube, uh, just your general lack of, of your skill to even drive, even though you do it every day. You, somehow I still find these people on the road and they suck. I can't wait for Tesla's to take over for that one. Um, that being said, because Elon is Elon, full self-driving, I don't care how quick it gets made, that's at least 
three years down the road. And that's like, that's if they, they, they bend it and, and start paying politicians. Like, I, there's just, I would be happy if I'm wrong. Don't get me wrong. Again, this isn't hate. It's just be me being realistic of where's my timeline on this. It's down the road. Tesla's going to see many hypes and pull, pullbacks. Now, Tesla's pulled back 50% quite a few times. Uh, we'll, we'll see a couple more though, a few more of those before Tesla full self, before full self driving's out. Let alone uh, who knows when the Cybertruck's coming out or or the semi or anything like that. Um, but my the biggest thing I think for Tesla is going to be the energy race. I think we're about to kick off an energy race. Uh, and this is what I've been saying since the start of my YouTube channel. It's why I like Tesla so much. The, it's what caught my attention in, in the beginning was the actual scientist Nikola Tesla. Um, that guy was awesome. So when I heard of Tesla, I started digging into it. When I found out what they're getting into and they're, they're buying Solar City, like I was on board. Like it, it, it's, you just need to do the math, put some pen to paper and find out just how efficient and how very realistic it is to live off and have green energy, to live off solar. Elon's even said itself, you need a tiny part of Utah to power the world in solar panels. Uh, you know, the, the only thing is, is the sun's only up during the day. Uh, so far, it hasn't missed a day, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but you need the batteries to store because, you know, like I have solar on my roof. Uh, you know, I, I collect power during the day. At night, we're using that that power. Uh, you got to store it and then, then use it. So with materials and stuff like that and building it, that's going to be a setback. So and, and by setback, it's the reason we don't have it now. Uh, that's it. All that's going in, and I think as we get that materials in and that slowly builds out, you're not going to be paying your electric provider. You're going to be paying Tesla. The cool thing about Tesla getting into the energy world is we already have the grid. It's literally already made. Elon's just going to say, thanks. I'm glad I don't have to build that, too. I can stick to my tunnels. Thanks for those wires in the ground. I'm going to start pumping the electricity through. I appreciate you while you're going out of business. Because uh, why... Why would you still buy Tesla? Would just be cheaper. It would be. It's also from the sun. I don't know. Seems free. I have it. I personally experienced it. I kind of like it. You ever tried it? Uh, and also, let's the the whole. It takes a lot of gas or power or pollution or what? What do they say to to make the electric car? Let me go ahead and end that real quick for you guys because everyone's talking about. Uh, it, it takes. What do they always say? I need to find the exact quote because it's dumb. Uh, as far as car polluting the air, it puts all the carbon in there. It takes more to make that battery than a, than a regular car. I, I, I get that, but that car is still polluting while your EV is not. And if you just look at the math, it, it's there. You just got to get out of your echo chamber of hate and just go look. Uh, you're already at break even as far as the pollution goes at six months of ownership. So... Um, there was a couple more points I wanted to make. Uh, that's that's my hopes and dreams category, I guess. The stuff that doesn't exist yet. Energy is not top on their list. Um, but you can only make so many cars and so many factories. And the cool thing about Elon and Tesla and everything he's built is he's got the pipeline already built. He's got the list of things. He's already got the totem pole. He's already got the priority list. Like, we're going to do this, then this, then this, then this. And those are already, it's already in motion. While there's just a little bit and it's kind of on hold, it's still all there. While it's not tangible, so I can't say we're going to do this many solar roofs and this is going to provide this, I know how big the energy sector is. Uh, I know how big tapping into that's going to be. Um, so that's ultimately why I do want this company so much. Long term, I do think it's going to be awesome. Um, so I did just want to talk about in investing in it. Um, I, I don't care for the argument if it's an automotive company because, while well, we can probably say that because I know it gets its profits from cars. Like that's just for now. All of that is just temp. It's not even forever if they only came out and said all we're going to do is make cars then the whole automotive valuation would probably make sense i just we've made it through this whole entire video and i haven't even talked about um oh this the transformer robot <laughs> what is his name optimus I, I i can't even talk about optimus because that just sends me down a rabbit hole 
Because, one, like, if you have a job, can you just bring Optimus with you and it just does your job? <laughs> and you get to sit down and you're just the tech, you just kind of manage it? Or do we just take it one step further and companies just start hiring those? Remember the fit people threw? You, you don't because you're younger. You're on YouTube now. Uh, but when ATMs first came out, people were throwing fits. Yeah, there used to be a person at the bank that would hand you your money and do all transactions. And now there's an ATM, the automated teller. Wait till everything's automated. Then you do have to live off that universal income. And th but then what does the world turn into? Like when you don't have to show up to work, but the work's still getting done? Uh, imagine that they, they can print out 40 million cars uh, if that was a, a need at that point because well they're not taking smoke breaks <laughs> they're they're working around the clock they're not running out of fuel uh, they would just cycle through I guess energy wise battery wise just imagine that like it, uh, the whole United States it's just a huge industrial company I don't know that Optimus would be will be absolutely huge and if tesla's the first one there ridiculous so if, if all that translates into income like if you guys think google is a monopoly you know pelosi loves to bring out that bill until they pay her on the side uh tesla will how i think that will play out one day will be like a light switch oh cool it's a bot Oh, look, looks like I robot. It's kind of stupid. Uh, and then the next day, it's everywhere. Like, once that kicks on, once we turn that rock, we flip that rock, turn that leaf, whatever you want to call it, it gets nuts. Um, I, I guess the bare case on that is, like every technology, it starts out expensive and then it races to zero as competition comes in. Uh, I guess I should mention the automotive competition. Uh, it should eventually show up one day. Um, yeah. Yep, uh, automotive competition. Uh, I, 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 what I'm trying to do is hype this up. I'm trying to come up with... I, had to, I was trying to think of what all the bears say about Tesla. Um, I mean, it, it sucks that in the time Tesla announced a truck, we have the Rivian announced and come out. We have the Ford F-150 Lightning announced and came out. Uh, it, it's, it's again, a pro and con of Elon because he made the space wedge. He couldn't just stick with what's tried and true and what every truck looks like uh, and just already had that thing out. Um, I guess the only point there would be he beat everybody. But uh, I've thought about this. This is a personal thing for me because what was I going to get? The, the space wedge or the F-150 Lightning? I thought the F-150 did look better. I was on board that. That giant frunk. Like, I have a truck, now I just imagine that as a trunk, and I still got the bed? That was huge. But I just, the reason I decided against it is I, I can't trust the tech. Tesla's just got too much of the tech. Like, they just have uh, the experience. The, the last thing I want, like, one thing they were worried about is a metal rod going through the battery, and any other battery, that's a grenade. It detonates. Uh, it, the current just goes to infinite, if you know what that means. Uh, without resistance things just start melting so tesla was like, the first one's like well if this happens this is why our batteries won't do that like that's a peace of mind uh, so uh, i don't know if i'm the first like you guys <laughs> and this happened at the super bowl you know with the uh all these evs coming out everyone started googling like yeah cool electric vehicle okay uh i like audi uh audi here's a tesla tesla's been doing it longer tesla has more the top three safest cars in the world are Tesla. I guess I'm just getting a Tesla. You know, like, that's it. Oh, there's panel gaps. Um, they used to make Teslas in a tent. Okay, they'll get that under control. I, I, <laughs> I prefer my battery not turning into a grenade and having to complain about if I'm one of the few that got a uh, panel not put on right. Uh, which that goes away with Optimus anyway because computers are a little bit more tedious than humans. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here. I just wanted to talk about there is the fanboys out there. There is, It's still definitely a, 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 a cult stock. Uh, but these, there's, what do they call them, revolutionaries. There are people that come like this and then they go. Like Netflix was big. Netflix isn't going to be here forever. Uh, sorry. That's uh, just kind of how that is. Uh, so I do get the bear case on that. But 
this is like I do believe the once in a, in a lifetime tickers that is just going to be like we're still on the ground floor. You know, this is like I think Tesla right now is like Bitcoin at twenty thousand. Yeah, it's crashing. Bitcoin went down to seven thousand after that, or like even cheaper, I think. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it goes up to seventy thousand. Uh, while again, bear cases, all they do is make cars and, and that's hopes and dreams. It's not tangible. I get that. It's just in the pipeline. It's a, a, a waiting game. And as an investor, like you're playing that game. So just wanted to address as far as this video, just why I like Tesla, why I don't, don't care to hype it up. Why I agree with a lot of that hype, why some of those guys might get a little excited and it's easy just to hop in that echo chamber. But just talk about, instead of talking about trading Tesla today, it was just talking about why I'm investing in it, why it will be my bigger position, why it's the one I'm holding for a while. Uh, so I'll wrap it up here, guys. Sorry, this one was a little bit lengthier than the videos on here. Um, anyway, hit the thumbs up, the subscribe, all the things the YouTubers say, you guys know. Links are always in the description for everything. Uh, but let me know down below. I, I'll even list. I'll entertain the stupid. I, sorry. If you think Tesla's going to zero, I'll, I'll hear you out. Uh, but do you have any like valid responses? What's your opinion on Tesla? Are you still valuing it as a car company because you think that's all they're ever going to do, uh, or do you think it's going to thirty thousand? Because I don't know. You made up a number. It sounded good. <laughs> well, let me know, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.